Okay, we're on Masechet Shvi'it, Perak Bet, Mishnah Aleph. So we've been talking about Tosefet Shvi'it, and we said that for Tosefet Shvi'it, we said there's something called a Sade Ilan, a tree field, and the tree field, if it has enough trees, three trees or ten small trees, etc., etc., you can, you can uh, plow, a person is allowed to plow in that field up until, we said, it's a machlok between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel. As we said, either it's Shavuot or until it's good for the fruit, etc. That's what we learned. So now the, the mission is going to talk about it's called the Sadeh HaLavan. It's called Sadeh HaLavan. Basically, a field that you're planting Tvu'ah, Bekitni, you're planting grain or you're planting legumes. It has no trees. So, in that case, it's going to be a little bit earlier. Why? Because you're only planting the Sadeh HaLavan. You're only plowing the Sadeh HaLavan in order to grow another crop before it should be eaten. So you have to plow it so early that you'd be able to grow the crop before Shavi'it, before Tishrei. So says the Mishnah, Until when are you allowed to plow? In this day Lavan, up to Shavi'it, until it, it removes, it finishes its wetness. As long as people are plowing to plant, Mikshaot Kishuim are gourds, Dalat are gourds, kishuim are, are squashes. Squash or gourds or cucumbers, whatever it was that they were planting. So as long as it's wet enough that people would still plant, then you're good. So, so that's the, the, the opinion of the Tanakama. Amar Rabbi Shimon said, Rabbi Shimon, atata Torah, kol echad ve'echad you, you made it subjective. Why? Because it depends on each person. When I plant my field, my field happens to be more, I don't know, more saturated with water. I can plant longer. You can't plan longer, so you're, you're, you're putting it kol echad v'echad b'do in its own ends. Ella, rather, said Rabbi Shimon, we have to sort of, we have to objectify it. We have to get a specific time. B'sadeh lavan ara pesach. If it's sadeh lavan ara pesach, u b'sadeh ilan ad atzeret. If it's a, if it's a grain, uh, if it's a grain field, you have until pesach. Sadeh ilan, you have until shavuot. So now, the, the Yerushalmi says, actually, that it's a double machloket. Okay, that the opinion in our Mishnah is Rabbi Meir. The Tanakam is Rabbi Meir. Remember, Rabbi Meir said, Sdei Lavan, it's a machloket between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel, whether it's good for the fruit or whether actually it's Shavuot. And the Mishnah itself said, yeah, they're pretty close. He says, but Rabbi Meir says, everyone agrees, in Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel says, right, in, a, in the case of Sdei Lavan, in a grain field or a legume field, a vegetable field that has to be watered, that's only until the, the, the wetness from the rains are gone, then you can't do it anymore. Whereas Rabbi Shimon, he's not only saying Ara Pesach. Remember, Rabbi Shimon here said we have to standardize it. It's not enough. You can't just say, you know, subjectively whatever your field is. Rather, Stelavan Ara Pesach, objectify it. Ubiste Ilan Ara Tzeret. He says also there's no machloket. Not only is there no machloket between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel uh, about Stelavan, there's no machloket between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel until Atzeret either. This is a useful chart to have. You could just uh, take a screenshot of it if you'd like. Now, I want to mention the Bartunura points out, oh, by the way, Kol, he says, Kol HaMishnayot Halalu, Duchuyotim. All these these Mishnayot, in this first two chapters, almost all of the second chapter as well, are Duchuyot, pushed off, like we said. Sheraban Gamliel Ubeitino, Raban Gamliel Ubeitino, Nimnu HaShnei Prakim Halalu, they gathered, they decided about these two chapters, Shein Pesach Ve'atzeret, by Pesach Ubitlum. Okay, they are, they, they negated them. And you can plant until Rosh Hashanah of Shemit, which is quite fascinating because if you look back at our charts that we had before, we said not only, we said, if you look back at the list, if you look at the chart, we said that not only is there, this was, this was our first Mishnah, not only is there Tosef Shemit for Sadeh, this is Sadeh Ilan. Remember Beit Tilel, Beit Shammai, whatever, Machloke. But we said, everyone said 30 days before, it's Halacha Moshe Sinai. So along came Ramah Gamliel and was like, oh, I don't know, no, don't worry about it. Negate it. You can plant up until Rosh Hashanah itself. You can, you can, sorry, you can plow up until Rosh Hashanah. So first of all, what happened to Halacha Lemosh Misinai? But I, even more than that, I'm really interested in another question, which is why Rabbi Gamliel, I asked a few friends and they said it's Rabbi Gamliel, the son of Rabbi Yudah Anasi, who made the Mishnah. Why in the world, if Rabbi Yudah Anasi is living in an era after the Chorban Bay, and the people are struggling to make ends meet, and they just can't do it, now you're adding to Sefer Shvi, and it's negated. Why is Rabbi Yudah Anasi spending two, almost two full prakim relating what we call Mishnah Rishona, the old Mishnah? Why is he spending so much time, so much energy for us to learn the original Mishnah to Sefer Shvi'it, 
if it was no longer halachically relevant. Really interesting question. All right, we'll stop here. As we always do, we'll dedicate our learnings. Remember me, my father, Rav Simcha Ben Yitzchak Kalman. Make it a great day.